All right, we are going to get into a series of lessons or lectures on revolutions. And we're going to start with one that is known as the scientific revolution today. Please remember, when you're studying world history, not all revolutions or wars. A lot of times it's a change in thought or new inventions that spur changes like the Industrial Revolution. But it could be uh, changes in thought processes uh, based on politics like the Enlightenment. And then today, we'll talk about the scientific revolution, a change in the way people viewed and approached science. Uh, but then also you could get into some of the more classic revolutions like the American Revolution, French Revolution, so on and so forth, Haitian Revolution. Okay, let's take a look at the roots of modern science. Now, the medieval view during the Middle Ages, scholars believed that the earth was actually the center of the universe. I'm not a science guy, but really, I think what they're trying to say is the, the earth was the center of what we call our solar system. So they generally believed that the sun, the moon, the stars, the planets moved around the earth. This was called the geocentric theory. It's the view that the universe was centered on the earth. Aristotle actually started this theory in the fourth century BC. Ptolemy expanded the theory in the second century AD. Christianity also taught that God created earth as, as to be the center of the universe. A new way of thinking, though, comes into play during what's called the scientific revolution. It's basically thinking about the natural world through careful observation and also a willingness to question accepted beliefs. This revolution is related to several factors. Number one, discoveries of new lands and animals by Europeans, especially in the Americas. The invention of the printing press, which spread ideas at a rapid rate. And of course, exploration. Navigators needed new instruments to help them navigate the sea. If you really want to look at this, uh, this is a, a big difference from what people looked at before and all these new ideas. I think what happened here is that people started to realize they really didn't know everything. And so they needed to take a look at how they viewed science, especially here. We're going to take a look at a revolutionary model of the universe called the heliocentric theory. The geocentric theory does not accurately explain the movements of the sun, the moon, the planets. Uh, Nikolai Copernicus in the early 1500s became interested in an idea that actually the sun may be at the center of the universe, as they would call it, a solar system, you could also say. Copernicus believed that the earth, the stars, and planets revolved around the sun. This is something called the heliocentric theory. It's the idea that, of course, the universe is centered on the sun. Copernicus is generally credited with this, uh, this theory. There were others that thought about this as well. He was actually afraid to publish it, though, because he knew most scholars and clergy members would reject his theory. It actually went against most of their religious views. He finally did publish his thoughts in 1543. And this was actually the same year that he died. It said that he wanted to go forward with this on his deathbed, more or less, to avoid persecution from the church and other entities. After Copernicus died, other scientists uh, continued his work like Tycho Brahe, uh, a Danish scientist, and Johannes Kepler, who used mathematical laws to explain that the sun is the center of the universe, and then the planets revolve around it in elliptical orbits, something along the lines of this picture right here. This is sort of how Copernicus viewed the heliocentric theory. Now, as we go back, we're going to talk next about Galileo. Galileo Galilei was an Italian a sci scientist and astronomer. He used a telescope, one of the early telescopes, to observe the universe. He concluded several things. He says Jupiter has four moons. He says the sun has dark spots. Uh, the moon has an uneven surface. His ideas clearly actually supported the theories of Copernicus and refuted those of Aristotle. One thing that happens with Galileo, though, is he gets himself into quite a conflict with the church. Protestants and Catholics were angered by the views of Galileo. They thought that if people could question the church on things such as this, then they would begin to question everything. This is something that we learned about in a previous section called skepticism. In 1633, Galileo was officially summoned to trial by Pope Paul V. The church basically forces him to recant his ideas. He had to write a signed confession that basically said he and Copernicus were wrong and the church was correct. It wasn't until 1992 that the Catholic Church officially acknowledges that Galileo was correct. Uh, why do you think Galileo chose to actually recant his theory? I would say because of fear of torture. And he was a Catholic. I mean, he had some allegiances to the church. So these are something that these are things that were perplexing to him. It is said uh, that while he was actually signing the document that the church made him sign, that he was known to have said, yet it moves, meaning 
that it's the earth that moves, not the sun. Here's Galileo at the papal court before Paul V. Okay, next we'll take a look briefly at the scientific method. Once again, this isn't a science class, but you know the scientific method is a logical procedure which was used for gathering and, and testing ideas. Um, you guys know the format. You have a question, you do some observations, you come up with a hypothesis or an estimate. You do an experiment on that, you analyze the data from the experiment, and then you come to a conclusion. Bacon, Francis Bacon and Rene Descartes were some of the early folks that utilized a form of the scientific method. Francis Bacon was an English writer and scientist. He urged scientists to experiment and draw conclusions. This became known as empiricism or the experimental method. Rene Descartes was from France, but rather than experimentation, Descartes relied on logic and mathematics to try and prove things. He believed that everything though should be doubted until proven through reason. Now, why might the church dislike the ideas of Bacon and Descartes? Well, they were skeptical. Uh, they questioned old ideas and urged experimentation and logic rather than just relying on faith. Next, we'll take a look at Isaac Newton with the laws of gravity. Isaac Newton invented a theory of motion based on gravity. In a basic sense, universal gravitation is the idea that every object in the universe attracts every other object, and the degree of attraction depends on the mass of the object and the distance between them. Now, Newton believed that the universe was like a giant clock in which all of its parts, parts worked perfectly in ways that could be expressed mathematically. He also believed that God was the creator of the universe. So there's a lot of blending of science and religion during this time period. Roman numeral five is going to talk about the scientific revolution spreading through some key inventions. For example, in 1590, the, the first microscope was invented by Zechariah Janssen. 1643, the mercury barometer was invented by Evangelista Torricelli. It's used for basically measuring atmospheric pressure and predicting weather patterns. In, in 1714, the thermometer was invented by Gabriel Fahrenheit, where water froze at 32 degrees. Anders Celsius came up with his own version, where water froze at zero degrees. In the late 1700s, we have the world's first true vaccination. Edward Jenner develops a vaccine for smallpox. And then in 1661, you have Boyle's Law. Robert Boyle applied the scientific method to chemistry, and his law basically explains how volume, temperature, and pressure of gas affect each other. Thank you for listening. Uh, we're going to take a look at many more revolutions from this point on. Let's take a quick look at a timeline here of some of the events that we covered. Uh, first of all, we have a few things like Copernicus in 1543 publishes ideas on the heliocentric theory. You have the invention of the microscope by Janssen in 1590. Johannes Kepler publishes one of his uh, first major writings in 1609. Galileo publishes his Starry Messenger in 1610. And of course, Francis Bacon's book, uh, New Instrument, encourages the experimental method or empiricism in 1620. Thank you.